Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. We talk about social media, search engine marketing, search engine optimization, whatever is on your mind. With me today, I have Caleb McKelvin. The one and only. How's it going, Rob? Good, man. Uh, We're on our 10th episode, man. Can you believe that? 10 episodes. That's pretty good. That happened pretty quick. Oh, and a special shout out to our engineer over here, David. Yes, Mr. David, the mastermind behind all of it. He makes it all happen. (laughs) <laughs> makes us sound good, at least on the radio. Yeah. Um, today, we're going to talk about several different topics, and I wish you, if you could, call in with your questions about anything digital. Uh, we, we we have a wide genre of, of knowledge here, and we want to share it with you to help you, you know, be successful online. So the number to call is 855-722-0006. Again, that number is 855-722-0006. Looks like our internet's down again today. So we're going to go over several different topics, but I would love for you guys to call in. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. Um, Let's see. Today's topic, the first thing I want to talk about, and and it's been confirmed by John Mueller, is 404 pages. And a lot of people, they, they really neglect that. They say, oh, you know, it just doesn't, sh-, you know, it's it's indexed by Google, but it's it's not showing up. I'm not going to worry about it because I moved the page or whatever. It's so important that you move those, you know, the, if you have a 404 page. And what we went over last week in uh, Webmaster Tools is uh, the crawl report and uh, the crawl errors. And that's where you find your, you know, your 404 pages on your website uh, the reason you need to pay attention to that, because if you have a, another website that's linking to you from another site, um, if it could be, if it links to it and it's a 404, Google will not pass that. Uh, hold on one second. I'm getting feedback. I all of a sudden have Internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it comes and goes as it pleases. Yeah. So basically what happens if. You know, the link comes to you from another site and it comes 404. Google will not pass page rank or, or pass that link juice you need to as a, a kind of a popularity contest. And, and, and basically, those of you that don't know and you're just, you know, kind of new to this, Google looks at a website and the most, the more links coming to the site, good quality links, the more it's going to help rank you because it's, it's, it's a popularity. If you have a lot of people linking to your site, then they're going to, you know, look at you as an authority and, and more, give you more juice for that site. Yeah, you definitely. Robert. I mean, uh, if you have those four or four pages and you know, either you worked hard, uh, earning that link or somebody's naturally linking to you and it's linking to one of your four or four pages, it's basically like it does not exist whatsoever. And so, uh, you know, that's going to cause a problem for your site. Um, you know, you're not getting those high quality, uh, natural organic links that Google loves because, uh, all those, um, you know, links that you just put in a directory and stuff like that, they really don't care about, but those natural links that you get, uh, and it's going to a 404 page, then, you know, it, it's all, it's all for nothing. So 404s are definitely something that you uh, need to fix on your site and uh, though it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill you. Uh, it's all a part of the uh, the SEO strategy, the SEO checklist, is to make sure that uh, you have no four hundred fours, and if you do, then they're uh, reconstructed properly. And also, those of you that don't know, how you fix that issue is maybe you renamed a title or renamed a, a page in WordPress, and it changed the link totally. So Google has indexed that old URL, so it's going to send people to that URL regardless, even though you moved it. So what you have to do is, especially if you're in WordPress, it's extremely easy. You want to take possibly a, you know, there's a, a a plugin called Redirection. It's a great plugin. It's very simple. You basically say there's two two spots at the bottom of the plugin that say, you know, old URL and where you want it to go to. So basically when you do that, you want to make sure that you redirect that page. You, you'll put the the old URL that was there minus the root. So it'd be forward slash whatever your page name or if it's in a a subdirectory or whatever. And then you would put the new URL. 
that's going to and then once you save it it's going to take that url and anybody that comes to that that url off of that link from another site or uh from google's index uh from google search it'll redirect that page to the new location now and it's it's also important that if you redirect a page that you take it and direct it one to one so like it has to be relevant to what was originally there yeah. if it's the same page and you just moved it, then it's simple. You know, you just go right to that other page. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I was going to touch on the relevancy. You don't want to have a, uh, you know, it might be a blog post or something that's per, uh, particular <laughs> and in a certain idea or topic and then redirect it to something that's completely different or just your homepage or something like that. You want to make sure that wherever you're ranking, um, ranking? Re- <laughs> ranking. redirecting it to, is uh you know is of the same topic or it, it makes sense you don't want to just redirect it all over the place you want that redirection to make sense and it's a simple fix uh you know like you just talked about it's a really simple fix and with a uh, wordpress simple plug in and and just one to one and it's going straight there but you want to make sure that it's all relevant and it's not big jumbled going all over the place but it's it's direct and it's something that's on topic and relevant to what you're redirecting to. Right. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as what was there. Right. But just, you know, relevant to what was there. Right. And, and that way, if, you know, if Google indexes that link from the other page, it brings it and, and tells Google, hey, I moved this page permanently. And that's the new location is, you know, wherever it is. Yeah. And, you know, you said, you know, you wonder, well, how can I find 404s on my page? Uh, you know, we talked about webmaster tools thoroughly last week and that, you know, they're going to let you know, uh, if you're using other tools, I know Ahrefs is one that I is, have been very hands-on with. They let you know four or four errors. Uh, there's plenty of SEO tools that'll do it, but you know, your simple webmaster tools, uh, and, and a lot of these tools will let you know. And, you know, once you see those four or fours on your page, just see what it is, see what happened and then make the simple redirection. Yeah, and most of that you're going to find in Webmaster Tools, but you can also use, like, Moz. That's my favorite tool. I use it for everything. Yeah. Moz will do a, a weekly index of your site. and It'll go through and say, hey, you're missing this, or it's a it's a temporary redirect that you need to change to a permanent, uh, you know, pretty much anything you're looking for. Uh, you can do Open Site Explorer, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, another um, way that you can use 404s is you can use them against your competition. And uh, being a link builder that I am, it's an awesome tool to use. And uh, I just touched on Ahrefs. They have what they call a link opportunity. Uh, They have it in Moz as well. But it'll show you uh, 404s of your competition based off certain keywords, certain topics, certain uh, links and stuff like that. And uh, I'll give credit to uh, uh, one of my old link building team members she called it link jacking which i actually love that term (laughs) she called it link jacking because you're link jacking you're jacking these links from your competition but it's really awesome and uh it's a definitely a link building strategy uh if you're not using it it's something you might want to look into if you're having trouble coming up with content writing things doing content marketing so on and so forth it's definitely a link building strategy you might just want to look into uh just finding your competitions for four or four pages of of other sites that are linking to those pages and just reaching out to that site and saying, hey, I, I noticed on your site that you have a link right here. It's linking to a 404 page. That's not good for your site. It's not good for your users. It's definitely not good for the user experience. I just happen to have this page, or I just happen to have this article, or I just happen to have something that's very relevant, very similar, that's of high quality, that's going to help your website. It's going to help your user experience. And just reach out to them, just shoot it to them, and they're going to be very – uh, excited that you reached out to help them and and you know most of the time they're gonna be like thanks and they'll make the quick switch it's a really useful link building strategy uh you know if your competition's not going to find their 404s you could just find it for them and just make that fix and redirect it to your page but uh you know if it's branded of course you don't want to do that but you know if it's a simple uh if the anchor text is something very natural and organic and something that can link to your site then it's definitely something to look into uh, once again, the number for the show is 855-722-0006, 855-722-0006, the Digital Duo Show with Robert and Caleb. Uh, talking about 404s right now and everything SEO. If you got questions, concerns, statements, anything you want to talk about, call on in. Yeah, and Caleb, I think that uh, uh, 
I mean, just want to let everybody know too. There's a, if you're in the Mixler on the Mixler website, there is a chat form. You can actually chat, and we will see that live. I'm watching it right now. So if you have questions, you can put them on there. If you're you're kind of shy and you don't want to talk on the radio, uh, you can do that too. Yeah. Uh, now also, uh, Caleb, for those of those listeners that are kind of new to this and don't understand, how do you do the outreach? Are you doing it through email? Are you doing it through phone call? What are you doing? You know, honestly, uh, it's a simple email. Um, you know, just going through if you if you if you are doing a kind of the four hundred four strategy uh, and, and acquiring these links that way, a simple email is really what you need to start out with. Sometimes they'll want to call you just to see who you are, what you're doing, what you have. But uh, in the email, I really want to be, uh, you know, you don't want this a long. People obviously don't like reading these long, long emails. It's just a simple outreach. And you just want to make it uh, to where you're wanting to help them. Because, because honestly, you want to help their site. Because if you're having issues on your site, uh, you know, that's not going to uh, go well for you. So you're trying to help them out and just give them this simple, uh, easy fix and you're providing the quality content for them. And the, the best thing about it is they really don't have to do anything. So it's not uh, a long, drawn-out process for them. They make the simple redirection. And so just shooting them a, a, an email and just finding that. There's even stuff you can uh, – tools you can put on your toolbar in your, uh, um, in your window. If you're on a page, that'll run and see if there are any four – Four or four errors on that page. Um, you're talking about like a browser plugin. Yeah, like a okay. browser plugin, uh, and you know it'll check four or fours on that page and actually do it. If I'm reading a blog post or if I'm on a site that I think is relevant to one of my clients or one of my websites, and I'm you know, hey, let's just check and see if there's any four or fours on here, and uh, you know, I'll find out half the time there are, and there's an opportunity right there, and just a quick email, and usually I get a response fairly quickly. If I don't, I'll follow up between, you know, six to seven days. Just say, hey, did you get my email? Uh, you know, thanks for thanks for your time and, and anything like that. But, yeah, just a quick email uh, is all it takes. And it's it's really one of the simple link building strategies that's out there. What tool is that you use? Oh, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Is it head. Moz? No, it's not Moz. Yeah. Uh, if I had internet, I could tell you yeah. which one it is. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to get that for the, for the next show, but it's, it's a simple tool and it'll just run over the page and see if there's any four or fours on there, dead links. And, uh, there's an opportunity for you right there. Well, we got quite a few listeners I can see here. And, uh, if you would call in with your question, then no, I'm sure something's burning. Even if you're a, a pro SEO or social media strategist or, or a pay-per-click specialist or expert, Call in if you have a topic that you'd like to talk about. I mean, we uh, we love to talk to people on, online or on the phone. So the number is 855-722-0006, 855-722-0006. Um, let's see. I think the next topic we want to talk about, I was going to talk about a little bit, uh, Caleb, is image optimization. Oh, yeah. Uh, because there's some stuff that you can really, if you want to get technical, you can do to make these make your images, you know, even more optimized with data uh, yeah. and information that search engines can crawl. Yeah. Well, we've, um, we've run into a couple of sites that are in desperate need of image optimization. So oh, this, yeah. I think this is a good, good topic to cover. Yeah, I think... Um, the first thing you want to, if you're buying images from an, like an iStock or a stock photo place, to start out, I would, you know, the first thing you need to do is change the file name. I see this all the time where people, if you look at the file name of the image, it's iStock, so-and-so, number, number, whatever. And you really want to change that title to what's relevant on your page. So like if you're selling red shoes, you know, maybe your title for your, you know, your, your images, you know, selection of red shoes or something to that extent. And then, you know, possibly also use uh, alt attribute, which is ALT equals yeah. colon colon. Definitely, <laughs> definitely suggest that. Um, you can use that to put in either a phrase or keyword. Um, it can go up to like 25 characters, I believe. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is not a, not a lot of people know about, and it's really kind of a technical thing. And Facebook uses it a lot. A um, couple other like Foursquare, those those sites use it. But it's called EXIF data. What EXIF data is, is um, it can give, if you have images on your site, say you're a local business, you can put that data inside the image that says, you know, the location of your 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 business or what, you know, a, 
you know, it's longitude, latitude. You can put uh, a description of the, the image. It's embedded, and you have to have a software program to do this, but uh, actually mobile phones do this right, you know, automatically already. That's why when you upload stuff to Facebook or Twitter and all that stuff, it's already got that location data embedded in that image. But, uh, yeah, you can do that stuff. That, uh, you know, it's it's readable by the search engines. You can also use schema.org, which is stuff that will uh, Google can read to give a description of the image. So um, with that XF data, Robert, is that something that local businesses definitely need to? Is it going to have a local impact as far as reading images if you're posting something? Well, yeah, yeah. If you can put in a uh, uh, inside the, the the file a location, mm-hmm. you know that's going to help your business. I mean, because yeah. it it's just another signal that along with your address and stuff you have on your site that says it's kind of a double up on the confirmation of where you're located. Right, right. In the city, that type of stuff. Right. Well, that's going to play big into the consistency factor, I think, too. The more yeah. that it knows that you are actually at this location, the better it is going to be for you. Yeah, and I mean, local businesses, it's really for SEO, it's all about being real clear on what you offer and, you know, those citations of, you know, your city and, and you know, state and lo- location area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to, for you to show up in in the search engines, yeah. and one thing a lot, I I had a misconception I noticed uh, in the last meetup that we had, uh, the person was like, "Well, I live in Longwood, but I want you know I have a lot of customers over in in, in Lake Mary or whatever. I'm just naming some local cities here in or in uh, Orlando area, but um, you know you don't have to worry about that if you put in you know Longwood, Florida as your business, you know you know there's a thing called Pigeon, which helps your site. You know, Google knows that, you know, Lake Mary is a subsidiary of Orlando and it's close by. So you're still going to come up for people looking for, you know, Sonic and I'm just giving an example, <laughs> Sonic and uh, Lake Mary. You're still going to come up in Longwood because you're 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 the closest location. Right. I think a lot of local businesses fear that if they put their specific location, then they're going to fall short or they're going to miss on an entire uh, area and demographic, which that's really not true. That's the whole point of Pigeon is they want you to be as specific as possible. It's actually going to be better for your listings, for your site, and for uh, uh, customers to find you if you have a spe- if you go as specific as possible uh, to where you are located. Uh, and and you know the search engines are smart enough to know if somebody is uh, in Orlando and looking for a specific business or a specific service that you know if you're uh, relevant and close enough to them or you know if if you know you're gonna you're gonna show up in the search engine so don't think that oh well i'm out here but the major market is orlando or the major market is is here but i'm located in the small area out of here don't think that you have to focus everything on that you want to get as specific as possible exactly and and those of you that don't know i didn't just blurt out the word pigeon (laughs) pigeon is actually an algorithm uh that google released and it's solely made for small local businesses so, you know, just like my, the example we just gave, if, if say, uh, you live in Orlando, but somebody's searching for you in Deltona or Daytona, yeah. um, you know, Google knows that those are very close. Probably probably wouldn't so much Daytona, but, some, you know, it's a s- subsidiary of Orlando, like mm-hmm. uh, Kissimmee or, or Longwood or Lake Mary. Those things, you're going, you know, Google's still going to show your results because you're a local business close by. Yeah. yeah. In, in that zone or whatever yeah and that's why it's also important as a business to have a biz google business page google business places page um because that helps google not uh, it's an off-page signal that helps google know that your website and your business is where it's located right and if you notice when people search for specific things and you have that google my business account when you show up in the search engines and they're spe- searching for you specifically, you'll have a nice map that shows up with a pin so they know exactly where you are. Your pin's in the right place. It'll give all your information. You want that information to be as detailed as possible as far as the store hours go, uh, you know, the services that you offer, so on and so forth. So you definitely want that uh, my business page. Uh, the number for the show is 855 855 
call in if you want to talk SEO, uh, search engine marketing, digital uh, media, social media, whatever you want to talk about. We're here to talk about it. Yes. And, uh, you know, so kind of also, you know, one thing you want to uh, back on the images topic when you're naming your images and you you're trying to decide if you want to use an underscore or a dash you know to separate if maybe you have a phrase in there as the type as the file name google looks at a dash as a space and an underscore as one so if you did you know red shoes red underscore shoes it's going to look at that as one piece so you want to use dashes and the same goes for your urls if you're doing friendly urls uh, Google looks at those dashes as a space, so it would be it. It would make more sense when Google crawls that to determine what that page is about. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have, if your images are way too big, then you're going to run into some um, uploading areas. Your site's going to run slow, and we see often see too, oh, yeah. too many sites that have that issue. So. Um, you know, that's definitely one thing you want to check into. You always want to check the speed of your site, uh, and there's some tools that you can do that, but check the speed of your site. And uh, if you look into the diagnostics and you see that it's the images that are slowing it down, then uh, that's something that definitely needs to be corrected. Right. The um, the, the important thing is one thing, you know, one a telltale sign is when you load a page and you start seeing the image start crawling. Yeah. Down. Reminds so, me like, of old. <laughs> feel like I'm back in 1995. Yeah, you know, 56k. Yeah, they all dial up. <laughs> but the uh, the the you know, there's three there's three different really formats you should stick to, and there's there's JPEG, GIF, and PNG. You're going to get a better compression, smaller images at a, on a JPEG, and even PNG as a as, now, but mostly I would say JPEG, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, and, and you can, you can take those into a program like Photoshop or, uh, that's kind of an expensive program, but there's, you know, if you're, if you're in WordPress, you really don't have to worry about it because you can go into the image and hit the edit and it has an option to, to shrink the image down and optimize the size, the file size. But that is so important because one of your ranking factors is load time of your site. So you want to make sure that you have everything loading as quickly as possible. You know, if, if you've got a big website especially, you know, I'd recommend going to a, a CDN, which is a content distribution network, where, uh, you know, you'll you'll get super speeds there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Those uh, those big images can, can definitely affect. That's all part of the user experience that we talk about consistently. And we talk about it consistently because it's so important because that's what, the Google always focuses on is the user experience and those the and Google, the, the Google, I call it the Google, the Google God. Yeah. yeah. So that's what the Google wants. That's what they're preaching and that's what they're going to continue to preach. So those slow images are affecting that user experience and you know, it can have an impact on your, uh, on your rankings. Absolutely. And you, if you got a, another way you can make it smaller is if you know, it, like if you have a good idea of the size uh, that it needs to be on the page when you lay it in there, you know, make it that size. Don't, shrink it down using HTML, you know, giving a width and a height. Uh, because all that does is take that large image. It's like crushing a can. You know, it's, it's, uh, I'm so bad with analogies. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. But. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Or a plastic bottle, if you compress it just to give it a size and then, you know, you let go of it. And it bl- I'm going to stop with the analogies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway. We are taking calls, guys. Call in. The number is 855-722-0006. We are taking calls. If you have a website that you want us to look at and dig in, di- uh, dive in deep to it, we got a little time here. If you want to do that, we can uh, do that right here live on the air. Yeah. And if and you, you can, can help Robert with his analogies, please call on in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, what was it last week? I was talking about Spice Rack. Uh, it's, yeah, it was yeah, bad. Yeah, it, it's, it, bad. It's, it's bad. It seems to be getting worse, too, but it's all good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's comical, though, right? It is. Entertainment. It is. Yeah, I agree. 855 Call on in. Let's talk some SEO. What else you got on the table, Robert? Um... I don't know. What do you got? I don't have much left. <laughs> uh, well, we can talk an um, interesting thing. Um, Mr. John Mueller oh, yeah. sent on a SOS today. 
Uh, and I'll read it. I'll quote it. And uh, this is from Mr. John Mueller himself. I'm curious. There are a lot of there are lots of suggestions on what to do afterwards, but how do you notice that a site has duplicate content problems? Leaving aside whether or not these are critical, etc., I just like to find out more about how people stumble across slash recognize these issues, which is kind of interesting. Why he would be asking SEOs, webmasters, this question? Yeah, you know, I think you know, there's there's a uh, kind of a people are talking. You know, are they trying to come up with a tool for webmaster tools? Because John Mueller, he's he's a big part of webmaster tools. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, he's the uh, search or webmaster analyst over, and he's part of the search quality team at yeah. Google. Um, he's up there. The speculation is that they're possibly trying to come up with a way to notify us as webmasters, you know, if there's duplicate content. So, uh, yeah, you know, that could open the door to a lot of things. And this is only speculation, but I did want to talk about this. Um, and I'm glad you brought up this topic, Caleb, but, um, I think, you know, this could open the door to a lot of good things, but also a lot of bad things. You know, if, if Google is saying, you know, this content is copied from, from another site, you know, maybe this person, the webmaster doesn't know it. Maybe he hired some company out of country or something and, and they built the website and just threw a bunch of content up there. Guess who gets hurt? Um, cause what can be done is there's a DMAC Forgive me, is it DMAC? Uh, is I think that's the um, the initials. Yeah. But uh, what it is is it's a report or it's a you file a claim with Google saying, "Hey, this person's got my content on their website." And what does Google does is they go in and and they'll um, investigate that, and if they find that yes, you stole that content from another website. With this notif- with this, if Google is trying to come up with this tool for Webmaster Tools, this could be a huge problem because then you're going to get a lot of people. What will happen, Google, and I've done this to other, comp- uh, other websites because they've stole content from me because I ranked high. And they thought, oh, if I have this content, I'm going to rank high too, right. which is ridiculous. Right. But anyway. Um, well, I mean, this is part of it goes back to... <laughs> One of our shows is either four or five, I think, on um, trying to find the best SEO company for you, trying to find the best SEO services. It's sad to say, but a lot of these SEO services kind of just uh, recycle content on different sites and they'll throw content, just keep throwing it on there. They'll make it look all nice and pretty, but what you don't know is they did it for 25 other sites and you all got the same content. And you're going to run into this duplicate content issue and, uh, you know, get penalized or your sites are just going to, or pages are just going to fall off the map. So uh, finding this duplicate content, I do think, can be a good thing if they are thinking about creating a tool uh, uh, for that. And it can also help for your own site if you, you know, if you're kind of redoing uh, content on your own site and creating that unique quality content that we also desire. Demi came to the rescue. She said it's DMCA. Thank you very much. DMCA. <laughs> I, you know. I'm going. Uh, same letters in there. Yeah, you know, just the dyslexica. It, I mean, dyslexic. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. Dyslexic. So thank you. Thank you for correcting that. Yeah. So basically what will happen is is you're going to have people going crazy filing these reports with Google. And then, you know, if they find that you are in violation and, you know, copyrights or or taking somebody's content what they do is they de- they remove that particular page from Google's index completely and that could wreck your business yeah so if um, it's a, especially if it's a big part of your site and you have that duplicate content on there and um, the Google is not very forgiving when it comes to certain things and this is one of the things they're not really forgiving on and, uh, you know, once you get wiped out like that, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a long, long road coming back. Yeah. And then also, um, it depends if, you know, they can file the same report with also with your, what your hosting company, mm-hmm. your, your hosting company don't just, you know, they'll take your site down, um, just for that complaint. So it, it's really important if this report comes out, there's, there's other tools and tools I'd like to use that will, you can take your site and put it in this website and it'll look around the web to see if you have somebody else's content on your site or anything, but it's called copyscape. It's a good one. 
Yeah. All you do is you go to the site. Um, you can get you can get their service. It's very very cheap. I think it's like ten dollars, and the ten dollars will literally last you forever. But uh, but it's also that you can use it for free. Um, but I think up to two or three times before you you have to pay or you have to wait till the next day to use it again. But you put your URL in Copyscape, and it'll go through your whole site, you know, or at least that page, and it'll tell you, hey, this page, you know, it'll show you duplicates. Or it won't if you don't have duplicates, obviously. But um, then you can click on that link once it shows you the list, and it'll actually put your copy side by side to this website and show you in red what's copied from the other content, I mean, copied from the other site. Uh, so yeah, that, that that's an excellent tool to use. Absolutely. And if you find other du- duplicates on your website, such as like duplicate meta tags or meta descriptions, titles, stuff like that. Those are definitely things you're going to want to change on your website as well. Each page that you have on your website needs to have a unique title, a unique description, unique content. It all has to be different, and and that's going to be all those duplicates. Uh, you know, have to be changed. Everything needs to be unique. Uh, and so, if you do find those things, and you know, you run your site through one of these tools, and that's showing that that's all popping up, then you know, you got your work cut out because all that has to be changed. Yeah, and, and that's why I stress the importance of having webmaster tools yes. when you have a website. It'll tell you everything you need to know. It, it, it's your communication with Google. Uh, I mean, there's also one for Bing as well. But, you know, being most of the traffic coming from Google, that's the one you really need to worry about. But I would say if you can do it, get Bing as well. Yeah. Right. Um, the the It's so important. I just I can't stress it enough. It's, it's, it's extremely important. And with this possibly being a tool that they're adding to webmaster tools if you come across if that happens you know on the good side you'll know if google's you know scanned your site and found duplicate pages uh, whether it be on your site two different pages with the same content or a page from another website that and even if it's on your site you still got to fix it you can't have duplicate content or if you do, you have to use what's called a canonical tag. Canonical tags are tags that say, tell Google, I want you to index this URL, not this one, not the one that you're on. Uh, in case, you know, if you do have for some reason the same article twice on one website, you could take that canonical tag and put it on the duplicate page and point it to the original page. Yeah. That way it says, tells Google, hey, these are similar and I only want you to index this one. Yeah, I don't. I think a lot of people aren't really sure what canonical tag it uh, are. Uh, I think that was an awesome description of that, Robert. Um, Thank you. To to make sure you don't have those duplicates, and you know, if you're in WordPress or whatever you're in, you'll see uh, you can either you know have the plugin for it, or a lot of them have you know, is there a canon- canonical tag, and you can put the original site in there, and it'll make sure it indexes that page. But if you are gonna have uh, the same content on two different pages, you know, the same article, you know, if you got it in two different categories. So or just have that canonical tag on there and you'll, you'll avoid those duplicate content issues. Yeah, and as a backup, you can also put uh, a no index follow tag on it too. That way Google will still see the canonical tag, but it'll know not to index that particular right, page. Right. Um, Rini, when are you going to call in with that website you want us to look over? <laughs> call on in. Yeah, the number is 855-722-0006. I'm Robert O'Haver. I've been uh, in search engine marketing, search engine optimization, social media, conversion optimization for over 13 years now. And and, uh, it's been a lot of me. Caleb's been in the business for, I think, over four, somewhere around there. Um, We both spend a lot of our time helping others. Uh, we have a meetup group that we have every week. Next week is, I mean, this week actually Friday is going to be awesome because we've got John Mueller from Google actually going to do a and a session with all my, my group members. Uh, so we, we do a lot of community outreach, just helping others because, you know, what about that? You know, I, I wanted to bring up, we saw yesterday. This is hilarious. Do you want to call them out? <laughs> was it? Piggyback. Piggyback. <laughs> Piggyback. <laughs> I couldn't believe when I saw my eyes. Uh, piggyback, what's it called? Piggyback what? Piggyback blog, piggyback tool. <laughs> it's piggyback something. Anyway, it's a piggy. Oh my it's, God, it's, it's basically telling you with its name that, you know, it's 
stay away, but people seem to go to it. Uh, you know, it's piggyback something. I can't remember what it is, but, uh, you know, they'll, they'll run your blog for you and stuff like this, but you'll run in, I mean, duplicate content all over the place. Uh, it was just a big massacre. It was like a, a train wreck. You wanted to look away, but you couldn't, you just had to look at it and go through it. But well, it was, there, you got to tell them how we found it. We ran across a website. Well, we're actually look, doing a, an analysis on a website and, uh, they had a blog and the blog was horrendous. I yeah. mean, everything you bad. don't want to do with a blog, it, this site, yeah. this, this. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, running an effective blog is very difficult. So I can understand people wanting to find the easy road yeah. to, you know, put content on their site, stuff like that. You know, I understand it. And, you know, you just want to have that. that but if you're going to do something like that, don't, don't use a service like this, you know, get people to write for your, pay certain people to write for your site, you know, find writers, get guest writers that are in your niche and stuff like that. Don't, don't use a service like this. That's just, you don't know where they're getting the content for one. You don't know how they're getting it and you don't know where else they're putting it. So, but what was sad is like the blog had broken links everywhere oh, all over the place. The images were like five times the size they needed to be, yeah. but they were we shut down. The ink, ink. It looked yeah. like a fax was coming through. <laughs> 1982. Exactly. We were on dial-up or something. Yeah. But. <clears throat> it's just, uh, you know, that's why you really have to pay attention to what services you're using, who you're going to for help, and, and what impact it's going to have on your website. Because somebody might be offering that $10 quick fix, which I think that was yeah, around think, the price range. Yeah, it was. Like I think it was $10, $10 SEO a month. Don't, don't. <laughs> If they're offering ten dollars, five dollars, fifteen dollars, red flag. Just, just don't do it. It's not worth your time because though it might might be you know a small amount right now, what's going to happen to your site is going to cost you big time. Uh, uh, you know, in the in the long run. So be aware. I think we should start a blog post and just every week feature you know these crap we scams find. or whatever you yeah, want to call them. That, that might be a good mm-hmm. idea because you know. And people that aren't really familiar with, you know, running their own website and and stuff like that, you know, they fall trap into that. And how could you not? Because they're so busy with other things. They're so busy with actually doing their job, but running the website and running the blog can be difficult. Oh man. Yeah. It can be really difficult. That's why if you're going to use an SEO services, if you're going to use, you know, any type of service like that, really do your research. Please go back and listen to our show. You know which one it was, Robert? It was four, five, six, one where we talked about really diving into how you choose the right SEO services. Yeah, I think that was episode two or three. Yeah. Okay, okay. A little earlier. But really go back and listen to it and, and you know, do your research and it's going to help out. Just putting in a little blood, sweat, and tears is going to help out. Yeah, I mean, we've, we're have we on our 10th episode now and we have thrown out so much information it's good information for those of you who have the time to listen to those things even if it's in the car or uh you know while you're sitting at your desk working it, you know it can be mundane and, and boring trust me if you're not in this industry i'm sure that it can you yeah. know i'll be the first to admit it but it's such good information if you own a website i highly recommend you either listening to our show or uh going to my uh uh, what is it? YouTube channel, which is uh, YouTube forward slash Robert O'Haver, R uh, Robert R O B E R T O H A V E R. I've got tons and hours and hours and hours of information on there, as well as this show. I, I put it up every week after uh, we broadcast, uh, usually towards the end of the week because I I put it on in a video format. Uh, but yeah, there's just tons of information for you to to me and Caleb have gone through and covered a lot from A to Z. And, uh, you know, we can, you know, bring up other topics if, you know, that's why we, you know, recommend you calling in and, and giving us some, you know, what you want to talk about. Yeah. Which the number is <laughs> 855-722-0006. Call on in. You know, I know, uh, between Robert and I, we have a lot of knowledge and experience, but if you're an SEO expert, um, you know, if you've been in the business for a long time or, you know, you just want to talk SEO or social media, 
Call on in. We love to talk to you. We love to hear from you. We love to hear new things. That's the good thing about SEO is that there's so much to cover. There's so much going on. It is absolutely impossible to know everything. So if you know something that we don't or if you have an idea, a suggestion, or There's anything like that, man, call on in because we love to learn new things. Yeah. And, and going back to John Mueller's discussion, you know, he's asking SEOs, hey, you know, how do you find duplicate content? Um, what, you know, a couple ways you can do it. There's, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm a big Moz fan as far as their tools go. Moz, will, when it scrapes your site every week, it'll give you a report and tell you about 404s, pages that are blocked, temporary redirects, uh, titles too long, meta descriptions too long too short, no meta description. It gives you everything. Um, I like to use that. You can find duplicate content there. Um, it'll tell you about duplicate titles, duplicate uh, meta descriptions, duplicate content on the page. Um, the list goes on and on. But you can also, uh, I mean, I've, you know, that's what I use. And then, of course, Copyscape, like I mentioned. Yeah. Well, you know, using these tools, if you use them properly, and if you know if you know what you're doing, the good thing about SEO is you're always going to have something to do. My friends consistently ask me, "What do you do? Do you just go in there and you just get on Facebook and you search the internet <laughs> and stuff like that? Like, what do you actually do?" And uh, you know, I actually ran through one of the reports with my friends and just to show them, "Hey, what's going on? What I have to fix? What's going on?" And they're like, "Okay, so you do stay busy at work?" I'm like, "Yeah, now you believe me. <laughs> uh, we don't just go in the office and play, you know, play on the internet and stuff like that. As fun as that might be, you know, if you're using these tools, if you're hooked up to your webmaster tools, your analytics, uh, you know, using Moz or Ahrefs or you know, not to, we're not trying to endorse anyone, but just using these uh, tools effectively, you know, as an SEO, as a site owner, you're gonna be, you're gonna stay busy." Right. And, and you, uh, you know, we, we deal with some pretty large sites. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we stay pretty busy. Yeah. Um, let's see what else you got. Oh, oh yeah, I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. No, please. You first. Oh, well, I was just going to throw <laughs> out, um, you know, kind of do an SEO tool spotlight. I know we've talked about a lot of things going on. There's one that we haven't touched on, which is Majestic. And uh, for you, yeah. link, for you link builders out there, Majestic is an awesome tool to use. Uh, it has an awesome backlink analysis tool. It'll give you even the link trust of each link that you have. You know whether you should be linking to them or not, uh, whether they should be linking to you. Uh, you know, it'll give you a lot of link acquisition opportunities. And uh, you know, so I know uh, creating content and content marketing and writing blog posts and guest posting and all that can be a little difficult. You might. Uh, need to know where you can get new opportunities from or whether the links that you are building or earning, excuse me, if the links that you are earning are even worth it. Majestic is an awesome tool to use. Uh, it's one that I like and, um, you know, it has fairly good pricing. You know, you do have to pay for it. It does have a free option that you can use and you won't, it won't really go in depth for you, but when you start paying for it, uh, you know, it, it's a really awesome one to use. So if you're looking, I really don't know which one to use, you know, check out majestic. I'm not saying you have to use it. There's a lot of tools that you can use, but just kind of an SEO tool spotlight. Thought it might be cool to do that every week. Rob is, uh, you know, majestic is one you need to try out for your, uh, link building efforts. Yeah. I mean, there's also others like href, uh, which is, you know, basically the HTML for a link. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and there's SEM rush, um, and then, of course, Moz. And Moz. Sorry, I keep talking about Moz. Moz. Open Site Explorer. What is, is Moz? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Open Site Explorer is a pretty good one to use because yeah. it'll tell you the spam score of a site yeah. um, that are linking to you. Yeah. Like you just put in any URL yeah. or domain. And, and one thing I know we actually talked about this earlier, Rob. Uh, before you build a link or before you earn a link from somebody, do your research on that site. Because yeah. you don't want to link to somebody that's going to get hit with a penalty because it's kind of like my parents taught me when I was in high school, you're guilty by association, you know, stay away from those, you know, people getting in trouble because if you get caught with them, you're guilty by association. When it comes to when you're linking to somebody, you're kind of guilty by association if they're getting penalized too. So really do your research, make sure their DA is good, their P, uh, page authority is good make sure they're authoritative and a trusted site before you start uh, building some links with them uh caleb what uh for those that don't know what's a da 
uh, your domain authority. There you go. <laughs> your do- apologies, your domain authority. And, you know, you might say, well, what about PageRank? PageRank is kind of out the window. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you used to see twos, threes, fours, fives, and you'd be like, oh, I got a link from, uh, they got a page rank of four. Well, Google kind of threw that out of the way. It's all your your domain authority, how long the site's been around, you know, how quality is the site, uh, how many people are linking to that site, and the quality of links to that site. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that domain authority, but the higher the domain authority, you know, you can, it's basically Google saying this is a very trustworthy th- site. This is a very authoritative site. You know, if you can get a link from them, that's just going to boost you up. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, it's also got the spam score. So, you know, yeah. from one to 10, if it's got a, you know, a six or higher, you probably don't want to link to no, them. No, you don't want to link to them. You know, you'll see some with three or four and, you know, it just might be something a little, little small that kind of throws it off a little bit. But once you're getting into the five, six and up, then, uh, you know, there might be an issue there. Hey, you know what? I just thought another topic. A disavow. Disavow. Um, and that's something we actually didn't cover last week when we were teaching how to do uh, webmaster tools. That's, that's very true. You know, it's, it's it's something you really need to know what you're doing before you mess with it. But uh, to the disavow file, what it is, is uh, if you go into your webmaster tools and you look at the links that are following you or are linking to your website, in other words, um, and you go into Moz or, or whatever tool you prefer to use and, and see it's got a really high spam score. Or if you go on the site and you look at it and it's just total spam, you know, you can take those files and, and you really need to do your research on this because you can hurt yourself. If you disavow the wrong fi- uh, links, uh, and those of you that are not familiar with disavow, but what it is is it tells Google every link that you, every domain that you put in this file, it, it's, it tells Google, I have nothing to do with that link. I, I don't want anything to do with that link. Yeah. And Google will basically not count that yeah. for you're, your site. You're separating yourself yeah. from them. And you know, there will be instances where a really spammy site will be linking to you and you absolutely had nothing to do with it. Um, that does happen, especially, you know, the longer your site's around, and um, you're exactly right, Robert. You have to do your research before you enter a disavow because, you know, it's it's kind of like you're you're cutting all ties with that site. And, you know, the wrong one, you know, is, is not going to be good for you. But if you do find all these, these spammy sites and putting them in your disavow file, uh, you know, you're cutting ties with that site. Now, to an extent, extent Google knows that there's going to be a certain amount. So it's not yeah. something you really have to, ha- you know, watch constantly. But, no, no. you know, if you go through once every six months or so and just look at it, do a, do an analysis on your links, find out, you know, is it a quality site? Because more importantly, it's not the amount of links, it's the quality of the links linking to you. Absolutely. Uh, so don't go out there and buy links. I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Do not buy links. You see people all the time that buy thousands of links because somebody told them, hey, the yeah. more links you get, the higher you're going to rank. Well, yeah. you, you need the whole story. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's one thing that, uh, you know, clients need to know. Or, you know, if you're hiring something with SEO, somebody at SEO and they're doing, like, actual natural link building for you and they they show you, hey, we got, you know, we got four links for you this month. And you're like, well, I thought it was supposed to be 400. Now, nah, I got you four quality links that are going to, that's building a healthy backlink profile for you. There's no spam. They are authoritative. They are natural. I mean, it's all relevant. It's all good. You know, those four links can be huge for you. That can be better than the 400 links. Instead of this 400 links (laughs) that A, are probably not going to be there in two months, or they're linking to sites that have nothing to do with you. The quality of the site is terrible. The content's terrible. You know, it's just there's so many red flags. That's going to do way, way, way more harm than any good. But those four high quality links, maybe they got, you know, they were able to get an EDU link for you and they were able to get you on three really authoritative blogs or whatever, on sites, whatever it may be. You know, that's that's something to be proud of, especially if you're a link builder out there and you get those kind of, that's, that's an awesome feeling. It's like hitting a home run when you get one of those links. You're just, heck yeah. So, you know, you really have to think about that. So I'm glad you touched on that, Rob. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it's, it's, it's important to do the research. Like I was saying, like I use Moz. Okay. I, I'm not 
No, I don't work for Moz and don't get paid by Moz, but I sure sound like it. It really does sound like <laughs> it. It really does sound like it. And if you are, I want yeah. a piece of that power up. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the site explorer will give you that spam score. What you do is if you get a high spam score on that, uh, you'll take that, put it in a a regular text file. Um, you, know, you put uh, it's disallow or, yeah, disallow colon and then the domain. And that'll that'll knock out the entire domain. Or you can do just a URL, uh, straight URL uh, to wherever the link is. Uh, and, and then that'll tell Google once you upload that file. Uh, and once it's up there, it's up there. You can't change it. I mean, you can change it. You can upload a new file, but yep. those ones that you've already submitted are done. Yeah, they're, they're, done. they're set in stone. That's why it's so important to do your research. Yeah. Uh, and again, Google knows that you're going to get a certain amount of these things and they don't hold you against it, hold it against you um, because there are sites that go out and crawl other sites to, uh, to grab email addresses and all this other stuff. But yeah, there's some dirty tricks out there. Yeah. Dirty uh, tricks. Yeah. And they get penalized for that too, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. So using the disavow file it, and it's in your webmaster tools is, you know, strictly do your research. And then, you know, you might see, once you've disavowed a week or so later, you might see your ranks go up mm-hmm. uh, if you got rid of that spammy stuff. But like I said, do your research before you even dig into that and, and read some articles on it, uh, on how to do it and to be careful. But for the most part, if you knock out the spam stuff, uh, you, you should be good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like we got about seven minutes left in the show. Uh, if you got any questions, anything you want to touch on, anything you didn't hear that you want to hear, Eight five five seven two two zero 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 six. Eight five five seven two two zero 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 six. Call on in. Uh, time is a ticking, and uh, we got a lot we still want to talk about. Yeah. Come on, Rini. Call in. I Call see you on the chat. <laughs> I'm sure you had some questions. Uh, okay. Let's see. What do we want to talk about now? Oh, you know that the uh, announcement that Google made today—they uh, are—they started a a what is it called a company called Alphabet. Oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and it's 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 actually going to be the mothership of all the properties that Google owns, which is really interesting. That's a big mothership. Yeah, <laughs> big old mothership. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be the primary company of Google, yeah. so which is strange to me, and I don't understand it fully, so I don't want to get too much into it, but I did want to mention it. Yeah, that's something uh, you can check out. It's kind of blasting all over Twitter, uh, you know, something to read up on. It really goes in-depth and can get a little confusing sometimes, but uh, it, it's a big it's big news. Yeah, and supposedly Sergey uh, Brian, uh, one of the founders of Google, uh, is the CEO of it. And I actually sent an email to the press people that handle all the press for the company and asked Sergey for an interview. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be awesome. To get the founder of Google on the show. I would like to uh, to hear that, hear what he yeah. has to say. Yeah, it would be awesome. I'd love to hear all about, you know, future plans of Google and, you know, that they, if they what information they could give us and they won't give any information. They never do. Yeah, they probably won't uh, grant the interview either. But you know, we're talking about hey, shot in the dark, multi billionaire. But you know, yeah, but it's it's Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin. Why wouldn't he? Oh, that's right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Think about <laughs> well, you who's... shoot for the stars and get the moon. I don't exactly. Know. Yeah. But uh, very cool. Look, cool. Rena, you have twenty or er, tons of questions. And a little tied up today. Okay. All right. Well, I'm putting you on the spot right now. You have your opportunity. Take a break. Call in. <laughs> we have about five Six. minutes five now. Minutes. One question. That's what, five minutes. You can take a five-minute break and call in. <laughs> five minutes. And uh, don't forget, too, um, if you are in the Orlando area... On Friday, we have a meetup group uh, where we will have John Mueller of Google answering your questions. Uh, it's a rare opportunity 
for anyone to have this opportunity yeah. to, to actually talk to Google. That is the John Mueller. Yeah. Uh, so it's no joke. I mean, if you have burning questions and you think that, you know, our answers are okay, but, you know, you want to, you want to hear it from the horse's mouth. John Mueller. Uh, wow, that was a pun. Did you get it? Mueller? Hey, me, huh? Horses. Hey, mouth. there you go, so, Rob. <laughs> that was witty. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you can make it, uh, I would highly recommend it because it's it's not an opportunity you will get. Uh, you know, it's it's just really rare. Um, the guy is really great. He's kind of stepped up to the plate since uh, uh, Matt Cutts took leave and uh, has really done a really amazing job. And he catches a lot of hell from SEOs and people online, but, uh, you know, he does an amazing job. Yep. He doesn't have to do this at all. He's a very, very busy person. We have about four minutes. If you want to call in, call in. It's 855-722-0006. Again, the number is 855-722-0006. You can reach us on Twitter. Uh, I'm at R-O-B-E-R-T-O-H-A-V as in Victor. And Caleb, where are you at? At C-J underscore M-C-E. Hit me up. Yep, and uh, if you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel. I have hours and hours and hours of this show, how to to do social media, how to do viral videos and and, uh, um, content. Um, We'll see what else. Uh, Just tons of stuff. There's uh, how to use Twitter for your business, Um, interviews with me and Rand Fishkin, uh, Barry Schwartz, uh, all kinds of really, really good information. Absolutely. Uh, for webmasters, and yeah. and uh, of course, me and Caleb are on there. <laughs> yeah, it's good, insightful stuff. I need to check it out. Definitely and, need to check it out. And the good thing about the information that we give on either on YouTube or on this radio show, it's it's information that'll last for a long time because it's all best practices information. So you're going to get, you know, if you listen to this for a year from now. It's going to help you. It's 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 just as good as if you're, you know, if it was just done last week because everything is best practices with us. So, you know, it's got a shelf life. It's not going to be, you know, even if Google were to make changes, even from I'd say 2008, everything that we've done in the show lately has been best practices, and it still holds holds water right now. Yep, absolutely. I'll tell you, uh, just like my dad always told me. We're not going to lie to you. We might steal from you, but we'll never lie to you. And we're never going to lie to you about SEO, what's going to help your site. Uh, You know, it's not necessarily, I know everybody wants to be first in the search engines and rank on the first page with everything. Not necessarily how it works, but what we're going to do is we're going to help build the authority of your site. We're going to make sure that your user experience is high. We're going to make sure that you can take stuff from this radio show apply it to your website, apply it to your daily practices and make sure you have the best site that you can possible. Yeah. Think how powerful that is. All this information is really my years, 13 years of experience, yep. a lot of research. Caleb's experience all wrapped up into all this information. It's great to get it out of my head because it's not use. It's useless up there <laughs> well, unless I'm using it, but <laughs> yeah, but it, it's good for others because it nice. helps. It's good to share. And you know, it's, Instead of going and reading and reading and reading so many blogs, now you can just listen and, and apply what we say or apply our suggestions to uh, your daily practices. Hey guys, I, I, I want to thank everyone for your support and listening to the show. Uh, tune in next week. I've got special guests. I have uh, local guests and uh, local celebrities, Tom and Dan from 104.1 it's, uh, Corporate Time and Tom and Dan. Tom and Dan. <laughs> uh, they're going to be in the studio with us. So it should be a lot of fun. We're going to go over probably uh, whatever your topic could be. Uh, If you call in, again, call us next week. We're in from 3.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. I'm sorry, Monday through Friday. I'm looking at the the engineer. Uh, 3.30 to 4.30 every Tuesday. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Check it out. Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Palmer family of companies.